sorted and here is your picture. Right, so if you have read and understood considering a surgical pathology station, kindly tell me what is the most common carcinoma of gallbladder? It is adenocarcinoma, about 95% cases. All right, can you tell me what is the what is the most common cause in the Western world for gallbladder carcinoma? It is gallstone. Uh, or any other chronic disability. yes all right what are the what are the core what is the mode of spread of uh, gallbladder carcinoma it is usually spread uh, to the liver um, segment can, four yes. and five yes. yes and then the common bile duct then the uh, then spread to the perihepatic nodes Yes, if you can tell me if it is hematological or lymphatic spread. Gallbladder, ma'am? Yes, please. We are talking about gallbladder. Uh, it, uh, what was the question? Does it spread through uh, blood or lymph lymphatics? Mode it of is spread. usually, mode of spread is usually by lymphatics, ma'am. Okay, right. Then what is the most common area which uh, gets affected with the gallbladder carcinoma? It or is liver. Uh, liver direct for, vision. Okay. For, what are the for, risk factors which are involved behind gallbladder carcinoma? It is the occurs in female and the fat patient. Then if age is more than 35 years, 50 years old, and the patient with a uh, history of gallstone, then gallbladder polyp, and is there is colloidal cyst, and um, the um, if the infections with the Clostridium difficile, these are the risk factors usually present with the gallbladder cancer. All right. So, what is the mode of? How would you investigate or confirm your diagnosis? The gallbladder cancer, ma'am. <laughs> Dr. Inman, yes, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so uh, at first, we will confirm our diagnosis by clinical history. History, the patient will give us the history of the weight loss. And yes. uh, the, there's weight loss and palpable with on examination. We'll, uh, we'll fill the pal uh, palpable gallbladder and there will be epigastric pain. On investigations, we will do some uh, complete blood count, and C-reactive protein, and yes, sir. And then we will do ultrasonogram, where we will in ensure that there is, and some tumor markers we will do. What uh, tumor CA markers 90, are specific? CA-199. Okay. CA All right, okay, just suppose uh, you had a patient and uh, you operated on it. Uh, gallbladder carcinoma and you operated on it after uh, on third post-op day patient presents with wound side infection and uh, it's arrhythmus and nothing else so what would you think what would you expect which organism has is most commonly uh, i would say that yes. the patient may be uh, present with the infections so what will i do i will check his vitals, then I will go for uh, the, I will wash the wound and open the alternate suture 
and watch the own and send the own for culture and sensitivity and we'll start the uh, antibiotic uh, with the consultation you, of the micro uh, think of surgical exploration uh, after that uh, if the patient condition is not improving then i will how long would you uh, wait if ma'am it is erythematous and when i open the suture if i will see there is profuse pus then i will go for the surgical exploration to confirm that whether it is um extensive cause like necrotizing fasciitis where so what we, are where the common will... causes of uh, necrotizing fasciitis the causes is the group streptococcus pyogenes, Jeff aureus, yes. the bacteroids, yes. the uh, Clostridium uh, difficile. And how is then, it managed? But, how, how would you manage? Uh, uh, Necrosis facility is, is an emergency surgical okay. conditions. We have to manage according to the ABCD protocols, hemodynamic support according to the CRIS protocol. And then we will start the IV fluid and, and then we will uh, give the antibiotic according to the trust policy and take uh, and we will debridement of the wound uh, on all the dead tissues. What is the diagnosis the criteria uh, for necrotizing fasciitis? How would you confirm your diagnosis? There's a criteria. Can you please tell me about it? The diagnosis can be made uh, confirm clinically. There will be cellulitis, and on examination there will be crepitus. And on laboratory investigations, there is the RINEC, like laboratory risk indicator for necrosis fasciitis, which scores uh, is made by measuring the investigation C-reactive protein, white blood cell count, hemoglobin, sodium, and creatinine and glucose how much would be creatinine uh, how much would be c reactive protein blood if you can tell me the criteria ma'am mm, uh, c reactive protein is more than uh, or equal to 15 mg per dl white okay. blood okay who else would you involve in the management of this patient i will manage the icu uh, doctors then Which plastic section? surgeons and uh, autolaryngologist. Okay, mm. if uh, you have uh, started on, if for the patient on antibiotic, patient is presented with uh, diarrhea. So can you please okay. tell me, bloody diarrhea, blood in the diarrhea. So can you please tell me a few causes of bloody diarrhea? Uh, the, there is some infective and non-infective causes of bloody yes. diarrhea. The infective causes are uh, enterohemorrhagic E. coli, enteropathogenic yes. E. coli, Campylobacter jejuni, Salmonella, Shigella, and a non-infective is ischemic enterocolitis. There will be hemorrhoids, and there will be rectal carcinoma, and that's all. Man. Okay, how would you differentiate on post-operative bloody diarrhea for differentials? How would you differentiate? Which one is because of which condition? Is there any way you can that find out? It is um, the causes are ma'am, uh, C. dermal colitis, then ischemic colitis, and there will be hospital acquired infective gastroenteritis, and there is inflammatory bowel disease. Yes. Can you tell me the pathogenesis of C. dermal colitis? Or the, the C. dermal colitis is triggered by using the antibiotic therapy, yes. which disrupt, disrupts the microbiome, uh, normal flora of the gut and uh, leads to the growth of the Clostridium difficile, which uh, leads to the, um, uh, some entero, which release some enterotoxin. And this enterotoxin disrupts the epithelial function and it responds like volcano-like eruptions of neutrophil and which gives rise to the mucopurulent uh, from pseudomembranes in the gut. Okay. How should that be managed? 
first you give medication antibiotics and patient has diarrhea and now patient has pseudomembranous colitis how should that be managed yes ma'am how should that be managed what would you do next uh, i will investigate the patient by um again with the uh, uh, full blood count and i uh, i will do the x ray abdominal x ray then okay. c-reactive protein how will you keep on monitoring the progress of the patient i will monitor by clinically like even the fever settles yes and diet settles yes and the other blood uh, counts become normal yes that's how i will monitor the patient blood parameters okay good thank you okay okay come now